Merry Christmas, it's the 3rd of December 2019 and welcome to Azure NetApp Files. Whoa, Nelly, that's far too serious. It is Christmas after all. How about something a little more festive? Hit it, Rudolph! Hey, jingity jing, it's Dominic the donkey. Jingity jing, the Italian Christmas donkey. La 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 la. Hello, my name is Anthony Mashford and welcome to this session about running your most demanding file workloads in the cloud using Microsoft's Azure NetApp files. The challenges around file workloads that most people experience in the public cloud are performance, reliability and management. Azure NetApp files addresses these challenges in three ways. It delivers high performance, it's highly available and it's on demand. High performance is delivered using three tiers, standard, premium, and ultra. It's highly available as it is part of the Azure platform and the resilience that that brings. And it is on demand. You can provision high performance file shares on demand within minutes. And of course, all of this is underpinned using NetApp's ONTAP technology, which is delivered to you as a service. Azure NetApp files is the choice of multiple file protocols, NFS, SIFS, and SMB. It is built using high performance storage with multiple tiers, standard, premium and ultra, as I've already mentioned. And it is important to point out that this is a Microsoft first party service. It is built as part of your Azure consumption plan with no need to provision additional licenses to support this. Performance sizing, uh, it's a simple calculation, which is service level times volume quota will give you your performance. Storage hierarchy. Underneath a subscription, you create your NetApp accounts. Within your NetApp accounts, you create your capacity pools, and then you place your volumes within the capacity pool. Now, in this example, we have a capacity pool, the premium tier, which is 64 megabytes per second per terabyte throughput, and there is a two terabyte volume within that capacity pool. Now, using that same calculation, the premium tier, 64 megabytes per second per terabyte times two terabytes, we should realize 128 megabytes per second of throughput. Now, PowerPoint's all very well and good, but why don't we just dive into the Azure portal, create ourselves a NetApp account, create a capacity pool, provision a volume, attach it to a host, and do some testing. Okay. Here we are in the Azure portal. Now let's go ahead and create an Azure NetApp files account. So I need to search for NetApp. This takes me to the Azure NetApp files blade. As you can see, there are no NetApp accounts available. So I'm going to go ahead and create one. First up, I need to give it a name. I'm going to call this CCANF demo. And then I'm going to select a subscription. Um, I will just show you this. I'm going to select this Visual Studio Enterprise subscription here, and you'll notice a message has come up telling me the selected subscription is not whitelisted for Azure NetApp files. There's a link here, which I can click on to register. That takes me to a form, which I complete, I submit it, and within a few days, my subscription will be whitelisted for access to the Azure NetApp files service. However, I know I have a subscription that is whitelisted, so I'm going to select my ANF sandbox. Uh, I can then create or select an existing resource group. I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to call that resource group CCANF demo resource group. Okay. Next up, I select my location. And for this demo, I'm going to use the North Europe region. Then simply click create. Okay, I now have an Azure NetApp files account created. Um, however, there's one other thing I do need to do. So if I just go back to my dashboard, I need to go into uh, my VNet and specifically a subnet and delegate access to that subnet um, to the Azure NetApp files service. So I click on ANF here. This is a subnet I'm going to delegate access to. Uh, and down the bottom where you see subnet delegation, uh, in the drop-down menu, 
have a look for microsoft.netapp slash volumes and simply click on save. Okay, now that we've delegated the ANF subnet access to the NetApp file service, we can go and configure our Azure NetApp files account. Um, this demo is going to be uh, based around SMB SIF shares um, connected to Windows Server Host. Um, so we need to get the Active Directory connection set up. So within the blade here, we click on Active Directory Connections. Uh, we then click on Join and fill in the relevant details. My primary DNS server is 10.1.1.4. I'm not going to use a secondary DNS server. My DNS name is creating.co.uk. Um, the SMB server prefix, which I'm going to use, is the prefix for objects that are created uh, within Active Directory. I'm going to give mine CCANF. The organizational unit where I want those objects to reside, uh, I already know that I have an OU within my Active Directory, and that is OU equals ANF. Uh, the username to access that, uh, ANF, and the password to access the directory. There we go. Once we've completed this, simply click on Join. And as you can see, uh, I now have an Active Directory connection created within my Azure NetApp Files account. Interesting to note as well, only one Active Directory can be joined to a single subscription. Now that I have my Active Directory connection configured, I can go ahead and create my capacity pools and my volumes. So within the blade, uh, click on Capacity Pool. And up top here, click Add Pool. Give that poor name. My name is going to be ccat one uh, In this example, I'm going to use the uh, premium service tier and the minimum uh, size capacity pool you can create at the minute is four terabytes. Click OK. And there we are. I have my capacity pool created and ready to put my volumes in. Now that we have our capacity pool created, um, I can go ahead and create my volumes. So down here, I click on volumes, up the top, add volume. I need to give that volume a name. In this case, I'm going to call it ccval01. I select my capacity pool. I only have one available, which is cccap01, so I'm going to leave that as it is. The quota is the size of the volume that I wish to create. In this case, I'm going to create a two terabyte volume. I also need to select the virtual network. Now, if you remember, we uh, delegated access to the ANF subnet to the NetApp file service. So I'm going to select this VNet and the ANF subnet. Next, I'm going to choose a protocol. For this demo, I'm going to be using SMB. I need to select my Active Directory connection. This was configured previously, and as it's shown here, is creating clouds.co.uk. And the share name I'm going to leave as ccroll01. That should do for now. I'm going to click Review and Create. Validation is passed. Now I simply click Create. After a few minutes, my volume has been created and it's ready to use. I now need to mount my volume on my host. To do that, click on the volume. Within the blade under Storage Service, click on Mount Instructions. Here you'll see a handy guide as to how to map a network drive. Simply copy the UNC path. Go to your host, open up Windows Explorer. Click on this PC, computer, and map network drive. Simply paste the UNC path in and click on finish. You now have your two terabyte volume connected to your Windows host. I now have my volume mounted on my Windows host, so let's go ahead and do some performance tests. If you remember from the earlier presentation, service level times quota equals performance. In this case, we created a premium capacity pool, and within that capacity pool, a two terabyte volume, which should see us recognize approximately 128 megabytes per second of throughput. For the test, I'm going to use a tool called Crystal Dismark. 
Now, I know that the die-hard storage gurus amongst you might scoff at this tool, but it's all I have. Get over it. So to do the test, uh, we're going to select the Z drive and click Go. After a couple of minutes, the test is now completed. And as you can see, the tool has indicated that we've actually achieved 138 megabytes of throughput for this volume. Now, uh, I'm sure you agree that this is quite impressive. Within approximately five minutes, we've created a NetApp account, uh, built a capacity pool, placed a volume in that capacity pool, and mounted it on a host. The ability to provision high performance storage on demand within Azure, I think, is an awesome service. Uh, and I urge you to go off and play with it yourselves. So now that we have created our Azure NetApp Files account, we have our capacity pool and a volume within the capacity pool, we now need to migrate data. There are numerous ways to achieve this, um, some which I've called out here, NetApp's Cloud Sync tool, for instance, which is a tool that NetApp provides you to copy from multiple sources to multiple targets. Um, we also uh, have the option to use the likes of Robocopy or indeed RSync. A recap on pricing and performance tiers, here are some examples. They are priced in sterling, so British pounds. Um, standard, as you can see here, is comparable to what would be known as mainstream hard disks. Premium can be seen to be comparable to SSD, and Ultra can be compared to flash arrays. Regarding region availability, uh, Azure NetApp Files is now available in 11 regions, uh, most recent of which came online in November, which was the UK West region. So in summary, Azure NetApp Files is high performance storage, which can be deployed on demand. It can be accessed via REST API. It does have three performance tiers, standard, premium, and ultra. Uh, it's dynamically adjustable uh, for both capacity and performance. It's secure and highly available, and it does have a very long and feature-rich roadmap. Thank you for watching. I do hope this has been useful for you. And please do continue to uh, watch the remainder of the Azure Advent Calendar, of which I'm sure there will be many, many more extremely useful and informative sessions from the members of the Azure family and the wider community. Thank you, and Merry Christmas.